Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. My name is Philip Flores, and today what we're talking about is Adobe Premiere Rush. Now, this was introduced today, uh, October 15th, 2018, and, you know, whenever Adobe updates its software or gives us new software, there's mixed feelings, right? Where A lot of us just kind of rush to it. I'm one of these, and uh, we just dive right in, right? But the problem is, is most of the time, these applications or these updates come with new bugs, new problems that need to be fixed and addressed. Don't worry, Adobe like gets yelled at every day, every hour, every minute about the bugs. I'm just gonna show you real quick in today's vlog what my experience was with Adobe Premiere Rush. I went ahead and edited a teaser earlier today using the program. I'm gonna show that to you now. And we're just going to look at kind of how it works and how I feel about it. So strap in and let's take a look. All right. Adobe Premiere Rush. All right. So this is the first thing you see is any projects that you've already created. It has this little default view. It's very clean looking, which I think is really useful for people that are basic video editors or beginning video editors. All you have is really all you need here. Uh, you can create a new project. You can look up help. Uh, you can look um, up some tutorials. If you click on community, that will open up their YouTube channel, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud's YouTube channel. Um, likewise, these will open up uh, the Adobe Premiere Rush like tutorials and um, question forum area um, online. So let's just create a new project. First thing it wants us to do is add footage or name our project. It's got this untitled. Um, highlighted down here, so we'll just say Test Rush. What's wrong with that title? Nothing. Okay. Nothing is in here, guys, because I don't have anything on my desktop. This is what it shows you desktop files by default. Do not put anything on your desktop. That's one of the, like the cardinal sins of an organized person. Anyway, go to the hard drive that I that purely exists for footage. If you guys don't like the way that this is organized, by the way, this, this gridded view of your files, you can come down here to sort, change it by name or uh, the date that it was created. And you can also filter it so that you only see audio or video or images. So we'll click on the folder that I need to get to for my footage. Here's all the footage that I want to put in this project. So let's let's do that. I know I want this shot. I want this shot. Oh, you know what? It's giving it numbers. I want to do this one first and then this one. So down here you've got this film strip of your your project, your clips. You can see all your clips in the order that you selected them and the name of your project, right? One thing you can do though, guys, is you can actually apply in and outs before you import these clips into a project. So if I hit this little button down here, it opens that up and it gives me the ability to adjust the, the clip duration, you know, which is great. Now I'll go back to that grid view up here. And uh, yeah, so I could do that to the other two clips, but I'm just gonna go down here and say create because I'm ready to create. It's got to prepare the media because the media needs to be prepared. It needs to be like, uh, what do they call that when you put all the ingredients in it? You and then you put it in like a Ziploc bag and you put it in the, you mix it all together. You put it in the fridge and you just let it sit there. You know, and just get ready. It needs to be prepared before you can edit with it. Okay, it's it's ready. Anyway, this is your default workspace, and. So far, the only way that I can see changing this is this little button over here allows you to, it says adjust monitor size. No, no, you're not adjusting the monitor size. You're adjusting the size of your timeline versus the size of this preview window. And I really like seeing my timeline. So I want my timeline to have more real estate. So that's what it's going to look like for me. So you have some basic tools going on here. You guys have these workspaces. So the home screen is where we started. The share screen is probably where we're going to end when we go to export and share it on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, down here on the left, you can duplicate whatever clip you have selected. 
Uh, you can delete it. You can expand the audio, which I love doing. I want to edit with my audio. And you can add these uh, tools to the left of all of your video and audio tracks. We'll just leave it off for now. So what can you do in your timeline? Well, you can do the basic stuff. So I can grab this clip, drag it to about where I want to have it start, which I think is like right here. And then uh, Rush just ripple deletes um, all the space before that. What if I wanted to add or cut out something in the middle? Yeah, you could do that, you know. Drag it where you want, control K, put a cut, control K, and then hit delete, and it ripple deletes that, that little space. One of the weird things I noticed was if I want to drag and trim my last clip in the timeline, it always just drags the video and not the audio with it. I have to grab that separately. One thing I do like uh, that Premiere doesn't do is it lets you click anywhere in your timeline and that's where your playhead will jump to. In order to do that in Premiere Pro, you have to click in the, the little time code ruler above your timeline, or you have to grab your playhead and drag and drop it. Great basic stuff. Now on the right is where the goodies lie. Titles, super easy. Hit titles and the default presets will show up. You wanna use one, just drag and drop it. I don't know, drag and drop it in your, um, in your timeline wherever you'd like it. If you want to edit that title, just double click on it. Just double click. Clink. Click. <laughs> Same thing. You can move it around, can adjust the length of it in the timeline. You can also edit it, like let's say you wanted to change the color. Well, you can, now that you have this title in your project, you can just drop down the element that you would like to edit. You can change like the color. You can grab the little eyedrop tool to change that color. Let's say we want it to be this like burnt orange. Okay, no problem. Terrible decision. Make as many terrible editing decisions as you want as quickly as you want. That's the purpose of Adobe rush. Anyway, transitions, don't care because they're just basic. You're either going to quick cut or you're going to cross dissolve and that's all you really have here. Dip to black, dip to white. No, just let's move on. Color, I care. Select a clip and choose a preset. Let's go to like film and then you can edit beyond that. Let's make it like, you know, darker. Let's add it some faded film effect to it. I don't know, but you can edit it. It's kind of cool. Audio. Yes, audio is important. Likewise, go into your timeline, select your clip. Let's listen to it. Hit the space bar to play it back. Uh, drop down this advanced. That's going to tell you what the audio type is by default that um, Rush has detected and selected for that audio clip. You can change that type though. You could, you could say, no, it's voice and you have different options to repair it. And I used these and they work pretty well. Reduce some background noise. So to me, that's great. You can reduce background noise, which is kind of an advanced thing, honestly, but they've got it here in a beginner type editing environment and they've made it so easy to like, to do. So that's fantastic. You know what, there is something missing that I want you guys to help with. I can't slow down my footage. I got 60 frames per second here and I want to slow it down, but it won't let me. So I don't know where that's at. Let's say we were done. Let's move over to share. Well, you can export it locally. No big deal. Choose where you want to do, where you want to export it. Write a different name. Let's call it test rush. Put it on B. You can change the preset. You can also add to your render queue um, a social media export if you'd like. Make sure you sign in, obviously. Once you do that, it automatically detects playlists, for example, in YouTube. So if we want to vlog, we can do that. Name it, description. You can copy and paste um, details here, tags. Again, you can adjust or edit your presets. 
your export presets, you can change your thumbnail. You can either upload one or drag, let's say we want this. Use that, boom. Use that current frame. Anyway, once you're, once you're ready, go ahead and go over here to export. And that's gonna bring up this render screen. And you can't do anything else while it's rendering. So that's kind of a bummer. I can't go back and, I don't know, re-edit something if I wanted to or edit something else like I can do with Media Encoder rendering and Premiere editing. But whatever, no big deal. Uh, once you're done, you're done. Right, like you can just click done, or you can go back home and look at your your projects. I don't know, whatever you want to do. Let's go to that video that we just exported and make sure it's there. Should be test rush. There it is. Looks great. Looks great. I mean. I think that it's a great program and I think it's really good for beginners who are just getting into video editing, need all of the foundational things to edit a video digitally quickly and then quickly share it as well. I love that it exists. This is fantastic. I'm hoping that they put it on the phone or tablets and stuff because I haven't seen that. I just see Adobe Premiere clip still. So anyway. <clears throat> Let me know what you guys think. If any of you guys know how to slow down your footage in Premiere Rush, let me know. I couldn't find that. That was like the only basic feature that I was kind of looking for that I was missing. Other than that, everything else is kind of there. I mean, it's pretty cool. Thanks for watching, guys. I love your faces. It's day 14. We're halfway there, guys. We're halfway there. Stick with me. I'll see you tomorrow.